Hello there, Internet. Welcome to episode 46 of Funny Book Splatter, a horror comics podcast brought to you by HorrorTalk.com. I am your host, James Ferguson. This week's guest is Matthew Ehrman, the writer of Long Lost from Scout Comics. The comic, illustrated by Lisa Sterl, is described as Stranger Things meets Ghost World. The first issue is available now, and the second issue is set for release on December 27th. You can check out a prologue for Long Lost on its official Facebook page at facebook.com slash longlostcomic. Matthew can be found online on Twitter at Matthew Ehrman. It's spelled E-R-M-A-N. It's been a while since I plugged this, but if you like listening to me ramble on here at Funny Book Splatter, you may be interested in my other podcast, Raging Nerd On, where me and co-host BJ Booth talk about the latest in comic book movies, pop culture, and nerdy parenting. Check it out on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, on with the show. Here is episode 46 of Funny Book Splatter with my guest, Matthew Irvin. To start, I, I, I recognize I needed some format with this show. Um, so for, for newcomers, people that aren't familiar with Long Lost, how would you pitch the comic to them? I pitch it as a slice-of-life horror comic uh, that takes place in Southern America. Um, my publisher and uh, a few other people that have read it uh, have started pitching it as Stranger Things meets Ghost World, which is kind of cool. I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's intimi- but, It can be intimidating, I'm sure. It's No, it's a lot to live up to uh, both for both of those things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I'm pitching it. Slice of Life, horror, uh, big inspirations. Like, uh, we love Junji Ito, or Ito. I definitely, uh, got, I definitely get that vibe with that. Dude, with thank you. Book. Yeah, that's... That's all Lisa. She 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 does a fucking kick ass job with the art. Um, and, and I gotta say, like Jinji Ito is like a he's a funny book splatter MVP because like I feel like there's there's like yeah. three things that get pop, there are three things or three artists that pop up in almost every uh, episode, and he's one of them. And it's, well, it's there's, incredible. There's so much to there's so much to be inspired from his work. It's like not only is the art like gorgeous, so it's like he does gorgeous art, but on top of that. He's an incredible writer and the stories he tells are so good. It's like, it's a trifecta of just goodness. And it's just, you can pick one of those things and be inspired by that, or you can pick all three. And so yeah, he's a big inspiration. Um, We also, we get into the kind of the indie comic stuff. Uh, Lisa and I have read um, this one summer by uh, the Tamaki sisters. Um, and that's really good. It's not horror. Yeah, but it's, it's, I'm not familiar like, with that one. I'll have to look it up. It's it's a slice of it's slice of life. Yeah. Um, it's real chill. It's really thoughtful. It's um, Do you, I don't know. Is there a, is there any influence with um with a black hole with uh was it Charles? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I get that vibe too, especially from from some of Lisa's artwork in it. I I get that kind of like look and feel with uh, yeah. how it's set up. I love body horror. Like it's um I love. I love Cronenberg. I love Charles Burns. I love Junji Ito. I love like anything body horror related. I'm way into. And, um, this book definitely goes into some of that, which is super rad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that I, I like all the, like all the influences are just like, it's like picking all these like cool, um, tidbits from the, from horror genres to go like, yes, yeah, so we'll have a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And you could see a lot of that come out in the book. Like I, they, it's it's amazing. Like I I wasn't as a, as familiar with Jinji Ito's books until <laughs> I started this podcast, and then I went out and and, and binge read Uzumaki on a, uh, on, oh, a yeah. on a family vacation, which was very awkward. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that like hyped you up for some fun. Yeah, on a vacation. <laughs> but uh, I, I I could see it now in so much. I could, it, it's it's like Lovecraft in that way of like you mm. can see how it influences so much in today's world in today's comics out there. So I can, sure. that kind of stuff definitely sure. goes through. Yeah. 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 I, I, and the other thing too, is like, I, um, I didn't, I, you know, I, I'm the first to admit, I didn't get into reading comics until I was a little older. I, I probably didn't get into like, I read, I read f- fucking superhero comics when I was a kid, you know, yeah. I read like Batman. And I think the first comic I ever bought was a uh, spider ham. <laughs> which was a spoof comic. <laughs> so weird. But like, I didn't get into comics until I was like much older, like in my late teens, early twenties. And even then I really didn't like get into it real smooth. Um, and so a lot of the inspiration for my writing comes from, uh, surprisingly there, there, there's a few video games that I think, uh, 
a few video game series and a few video game creators that have really um, inspired uh, kind of how I've taken to write Long Lost and um, uh, go about like I don't know narrating it out or plotting it out and stuff. So that that's been cool. It's been really cool to like dive into some of those weirder influences that don't have an immediate narrative thing to mm-hmm. them and try to make them work for a comic so so what are were there particular video games or something that got were your gateway drug into the into that kind of a into this kind yeah, of storytelling yeah, for sure um silent hill 2 is um i think quite possibly one of the best video games ever made and it's and it's really because of how it's written and how it's structured and how it uses like um it uses the format to tell the story in a really cool way. And I think that's what I like so much about comics is that there's so much you can do with uh, uh, the format that other uh, uh, m- 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 like mediums don't have. Yeah. You have that space between the panels. And like no other medium has that. No other medium has like that negative space of, uh, of just like where nothing is really supposed to be there. And it's supposed to... It's supposed to be like time and show you that time's passing and stuff, but I love playing around with that. And I think that's super rad. And the the Team Silent, the uh, Konami who did uh, Silent Hill, said, uh, they, they, they do that with that video game. They really stretch the narrative that they're telling and, and kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's super rad though. I love it. And I, uh, there's a recent series that I was super into that I, that I really loved um, called Dark Souls. Uh, oh, is that, that the, does, is that like the fan? They just closed down their servers, I think, or they're closing down their servers, right? The, yeah, yeah. For the first one, oh, they've okay. done a few sequels, and the the company did a few other games too. But the way they tell their stories is really cool. Um, no other uh, studio, video game studios, doing uh, narratives quite like they do. Um, and yeah, so it's 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 kind of a mishmash of a bunch of stuff. Well, and you write you write what you know, right? So if you're yeah. if you're taking all those pieces um, for all these things that have whether influenced you or just like things that you you thought were really cool throughout the years, and then they all had some sort of effect on you, and and you could see that like um, you know when you when you take different aspects of it, I'm thinking like oh, it's like oh well, if you see something, whether it's a uh, you know like how did that thing get there, or like I really like this scene, or how I felt when I read this. Then you can oh, yeah. take all those feelings and kind of like mush them all together into a story. And then you have your own unique kind of a uh, mashup of all this stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, no, that's I mean, that's absolutely right. I mean, I, I kind of feel like that's how creating works. It's just like you just kind of throw all the shit into like this big pot and then it produces something. And whether it's good or bad, you can't really tell until you get to the end of it. Um, but it's really fun to just mishmash all those influences and see what comes out of it because – Typically, you're the only one, or 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 one of the few people that have that specific strain of uh, influences, and you can kind of make your own thing out of it. So, yeah, no one else is going to see the world exactly the way that you do. So that you're no, bringing exactly. in a voice to that and and telling the story that you feel has to be told. Oh, for sure. I, yeah, that's. I feel like that's very accurate. Yeah. Now, was is am I correct? And this is is this your first comic? Yeah, this is my very first comic. Um, Lisa and I had done some, like, real real short stuff, like, years ago when we first got together. And um, for the most part, they're bad. Uh, (laughs) Well, with 10,000 hours, right? You got to start somewhere. No, yeah. And so we started doing short comics. um, And this this has been gestating in in our between us for about three years now uh we we went to a cabin uh out in rural ohio uh, out in rural ohio and uh we just had a really cool idea for a horror comic and we sat down and we plotted it out and uh you know a couple years later we got picked up by scout comics so yeah scout has been on a roll lately in in getting this really cool genre books i i was a little freaked out over the summer because they kept, they had that summer of scout where they every week yeah. they were announcing new books and like half of <laughs> half of them were books i had backed on kickstarter so i was like are they just That's, following that... me like what this is really <laughs> weird because like every week i'd get a new email and i'm like yep got that one like yep you did that one already right. like 
No, yeah, they're they're super rad. I'm really happy. Uh, the CEO Brendan Deenan yeah. and uh, the publisher James Pruitt, they have just been so good to us, and they really like. Uh, I won't lie, our story is really weird. Like, <laughs> I never honestly expected a publisher to look at what we were offering. Like, it's not quite like it doesn't look like a mainstream comic book. It doesn't read like a mainstream comic book. It doesn't feel like one. And I think they really took a big chance on, on us. And, um, they're really letting us do whatever we want for this book, which is, uh, I think it's, I think everyone's going to, I mean, if, if you pick it up and you check it out, I think you're going to be really fucking weirded out by where it goes. <laughs> it's going to be super rad. No, I, I agree. Like that's a, like, this kind of came out of nowhere for me. And like, I didn't know entirely what to expect. I try not to read ton of stuff about like um what the thing's about it's like hey do you want to check this out that's what happened like you yeah. reach out hey can you check this out sure so like i'll i'll like i'll, I'll kind of like squint to look at the the basic description but i'm like yeah okay it's a horror book i i have to do that because i get people to reach out and like hey can you read this and i'm like this is like a sci-fi book like okay like that's cool <laughs> like yeah and like you know you could one could argue aliens can be really scary or something but like this is just a straight up like you know star wars kind of book uh so I have to just make sure, like, yes, this is a horror book before I commit to checking it out. But for sure, I, I wasn't entirely sure what I was getting into. And then I was very pleasantly surprised by like, oh, like this is like, here's like normalcy. Here's a normal world. You get used to this this woman's life. And then something fucking crazy happens. And it's like <laughs> that that move that like I feel like I feel like Stephen King has perfected that where it's like, here's a totally yeah. normal thing. And then, like, you know, your earlier M. Night Shyamalan movies did that, where it's like, oh, sure. here's a normal wor normal person in a normal world, they're living their normal life, and then something bizarre happens. And it's like, you've gotten to the point, when that happens, it's past yep. the point where you're like, oh, I'm with this person, I can see pieces of myself in this person. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, shit, how would I react to that? How would I, how would I come out of this? Like, the, and it makes it much more personal. And, like, just the things that happen in this book, like, I, I don't, you know, if... If I spoil anything, please let me know. But the the yeah. there's a scene where like her window breaks and it's yeah, just yeah. like there's just something there. Like that's the kind of thing like I would have just burnt my house down. Like I'm just like no, nope. <laughs> like nope, it's it's done. This is like some crazy like you know hair brick that just came through this window. Like no, fuck it, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it, I I really love that about the the way this book turned out and and the way the writing turned out. I. I, I, I've re I've read a lot of the reviews that people have put out on the the, the on the internet and stuff, and um, I, I I really wanted this first issue to be pretty slow. Like I really wanted the first issue to be all about the reader getting to know Piper so well and her current situation, because I feel like a lot of comics move really fast, yeah. and I don't know if that's because. Um, you know, they have their mini series where you got to put out your four issue stories or you got to put out your six issue stories and you just got to kind of fly through your plot. But we have 12 issues and we can really take our time on some of this stuff. And I'm not saying the whole story is going to be slow, but I, I, I really do think that starting this off in a kind of, uh, I, I felt I was meticulous and I could be wrong. I, I, I might've been not meticulous, but I wanted to really show like Piper before shit gets weird. And um, kind of where she was with her life. Because I think, yeah, you bond with her. You relate to those instances where she's trying to make her dog take a poop. <laughs> or uh, where she's on the toilet playing, you know, uh, balloon popping games mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just like, uh, I think that's, those are the important parts in horror that I think often get skipped. Yeah, I, and I, you, you're right in that um, so many comics now just seem to go at such a, you know, breakneck pace. And I don't know if yeah. it's a matter of like small attention spans or if like we kind of rebelled from like the Bendis era of like decompressed storytelling where all like, it was like, no, yeah. we're going to take six issues to break this whole thing out. Like I remember people criticizing when ultimate Spider-Man started because he took an origin, Brian Michael Bendis took an origin story that took like, that was originally told in like 12 pages and wrote it out over like six or eight issues. And it's like I think that's rad. Yeah, no, and it can be. And that's the thing. Like people, people like gave him shit about it at first because there's always people that give anyone shit about anything on the internet. But yeah, it's like no. Well, you get to like dive into the more. But I feel like that that rubber band is coming back now. So whereas like yeah. everything kind of went to like writing for the trade, making six issue stories, and mm -hmm. you know really spreading out that decompressed story. Now it's coming back where 
No, you yeah. got to tell that in four issues. You have to tell that in three issues. And then by the first issue, you have to get everything that like someone like all the basic questions answered. But yeah. I, I really disagree with that. Like you need to hook the yeah. reader with that first issue. You oh. need to get something like that's going to be enough to like, OK, the characters are cool. Something crazy happened and I'm in. And yes, yeah. you need to look. It's the it's the you got to you got to be willing to uh, jump in that world. And, and like, um, I don't know, I, I, I think that's the writer's job too to like pull you in. But I, I think too often and I don't want to get too much into like writing your craft theory or whatever, because that's probably not the most interesting <laughs> thing. But it's like you it, you got to really like think about uh uh, you know, if you're introducing all of these things, you don't want to, you don't want to just overburden your reader with like all this information about like, you know, like it's not an elevator pitch. Yeah. Like and you don't need a, elevator... it's not a history lesson. That's the thing I hate. Like right. exposition dump. And no, that's yeah, tough. that's yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it's cool. I don't know. I, I actually forgot our line <laughs> yeah, of questioning. It wasn't, it wasn't really a question, I guess. We're just, we're, yeah, it's just like, yeah, wasn't that cool? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, one of the things I usually ask are like, well, how, how did, how did you get in touch with your artist? But it sounds like you, you know, you, you have a, yours was an easier artist to find than most. Um, and that you're, you're yeah, I don't <laughs> have to, I don't have to pay for a page rate, no. which is really nice. So, um, so how, I mean, is that tough working, working with your, your wife in that case? Like, are you, um, I mean, is that, can you, do you get into arguments about comics as well as like, you know, what, what, like everyone else gets into arguments with like bills or anything else? Oh <laughs> yeah. It's all the time. It's like, it's, it's, um, it's, it's like interspersed. So we'll be talking about the comic and then we'll be arguing about a panel or we'll be collaborating on a panel or we'll be working something out and I'll be like, Oh, did you pay, did you pay rent this week? Or did you, did you, can you go feed the cat or something? And it's just like, it's this really weird dichotomy of like work and life. I don't know. It's super fun. I love it. It's um, it's super collaborative, and it it uh, it, I think it makes this book a lot stronger uh, because we're so involved in both aspects of it because we live together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get to see the art through every stage of it, and she gets to read the writing through every single stage of it, and um. Uh, partially because we can't get away from each other, uh, <laughs> because so we're forced to deal with kind of what's going on. But no, it's it, it, it's cool. Uh, Lisa and I have been married for a little over a year now. We've been together for uh, I think eight years now. Um, you kind of lose track. I feel after oh you do maybe yeah six yeah, yeah it's, it's once it gets past a certain point like until you hit the milestones then it's like all right yeah, like yeah. you know we've been married for a while. We're coming up on ten in like two years I think so. Um, now, now but yeah. I would imagine that you're, you probably have a more collaborative, um, relationship than a traditional writer and artist that, you know, an unmarried writer and artist and that like, because you've been together for so long and you, you, you live together, you do everything else together. It's like, well, you, you should have a better insight into each, what you're, th what each person is thinking. Absolutely. I, I think we work very well as a team. Uh, if we didn't, uh, this book would probably suck. <laughs> uh, so no, yeah, we, I think we're on this, we're very much on the same page in what we want. I, I think that we like the same things when it comes to horror. And this book really came from our frustration with horror movies, you know, circa six years ago, uh, six, you know, four years ago. Uh, and not really feeling like we were getting what we wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think this this specifically was us trying to be like, well, you know, fuck it. Let's make our own horror thing. Let's – yeah. You know, if, if we're getting frustrated every time we go to the movies and we watch a horror movie because they they fuck it up somehow, like let's let's try to do – let's, you know, let's get off our asses and do one ourselves and, and see if we can make something that's better. Um so that's that's kind of our that was our challenge to ourselves. Uh, can we make something that we would want to watch or we would want to read um, in the horror genre? Because we're huge fans of it. Yeah, I, I mean that's that's always a good catalyst for any creative person of just like, man, I don't like this. I don't like this. Like, why didn't they do this? Like, everything was cool until they made this dumb move. And then to be able to do that, uh, you know, that I feel like that's such like a, it's a it's a. 
I don't think I don't want to say it's a bad influence, but it's it's because it's like it could be seen as like a negative influence of like, man, what what you know, I was so spurned on by my hate of this other thing <laughs> that I had to make a better version of it. Um, but it's, think... it's you know just I think you hit the nail on the head in that yeah. it's well I want I wanted to read something that I wanted to read like if if I was out there you know in the in the comic book um, shop and I saw something like that's what I would want to do. Yeah, no, and I, I think it's like I think it's less about like picking apart movies and like saying like oh that was trash or whatever and 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 looking and dissecting into like why it didn't work for us. Mm -hmm. And I think when you, and I've done that a lot recently and it helps me figure out even more clearer as to what I like. Um, because you can find cool shit and you can be influenced by anything. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to pay off or make something good. It just, so when you find stuff that you don't like about something, it helps inform kind of the creative decision as to not do that. And I think that, that that really helped me write this story because I would catch myself and you know a lot of those things like they're 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 tried and true tropes like they they work for a reason and after seeing them so often you kind of get tired of them and I I've caught myself and I've I've tried to uh, distance myself from using some of those because those were the same things that upset me or, or like peeved me off when I was watching the you know watching or reading horse comics or those those things that I could predict yeah, and I could know that we're going to come and uh, happen. So um, it, it's been cool to, to kind of create something that I'm really proud of. And um, I would also be a really big fan of if I wasn't involved in it. So, and also like that, that's also just a, a major factor in any creative person's life. And I think like Stephen King had pointed out in his book that or, uh, on writing that it's like, well, if you want to be <laughs> a writer, read like re see find yeah. see what's out there and then go out and 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 that helps see what how other people are doing it and then you'll start to see oh well, sure i, I would have liked this if they made this turn or done this instead yeah no absolutely i you, you gotta engage with what you're trying to make if you know and i think um i'm really i think comic creators are lucky because they it's it's both a written medium and a visual medium so you can pull from so much like it does, you don't necessarily have to sit down and read, uh, you know, uh, uh, a giant novel or something. You can you can read comics, you can watch movies, you can you can even like animation because it, it's just like it's all about the flow of the the panels and the way the 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 art works with the writing and how it informs one another. And um, there's so much that you can do to engage with art when you're creating comics that it's, it's, it's almost a disservice if you don't, I think. And I, and I'll be the first to admit, I don't fucking read enough. <laughs> like, I, I, I haven't read a full novel in a long time. Um, I read bits, like I read bits and pieces of them, but it, it's, I don't know what it is, but when I'm not reading novels, you know, I'm watching a movie or I'm looking at, uh, you know, I'm reading other comics or I'm, you know, listening to music, which uh, I think is another cool thing that can help inspire you in, in like tone and uh, the way things feel, um, which I've done with Long Lost, actually. So, yeah, do you have like a soundtrack in mind for Long Lost? Yeah, well, um, uh, kind of like a weird little Easter egg, but all of the titles to the chapters of the issues are songs. Um that I think that I've handpicked. Uh, so the first issue is called The Exact Color of Doubt, which is a Liars song off of the album uh, Wish You. And um, the next chapter is called Farewell Transmission, which is a song from Songs Ohio. So all of the chapters are named after a song that I think fits with the chapter. And it it's my way of... Uh, I'm almost positive I'm not the first one to do this. I think Alan Moore did it, so I think he did it with Watchmen, actually. Well, um, hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna steal from anybody, <laughs> steal from the best, right? Like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's my it's it's really my way of helping. If the reader is interested, they can listen to this music or this this song I've picked out for this chapter, and I think it helps inform the tone a little bit better. I don't know. It's just you know, comics don't have sound, so that's yeah. my way of finding a workaround i guess have you made it into like a spotify playlist or anything yeah i have 
Yeah, exactly. That'll be a nice thing for people to 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 look up, or or if you can if you share that out there, it's like yeah, like I, listen, I, listen to this while reading while reading the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think I'm going to share it a little later because I think some of the chapter titles could be a little spoilery. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it, it it definitely is something that I think um when you get the issue, if you look up that song on Spotify, uh, I think that's a, like the best way to do it. Cause you get the issue, you can listen to the song, you can read the comic and it kind of all works together, I think to create something. I don't know. That's kind of how I would do it, but you guys can read the comics. <laughs> however you want. Well, I think one of the, one of the benefits with comics is that they, they are, you know, short, like you're talking about like, you know, 20 to 30 pages worth of content. Like you could read that on the toilet. It's, it's something that, you know, you yeah. could sit there. I feel like I do way more comic reviews than what. Like, I I only do comics now. Like, I've I've um, mm. I've moved away from movies and to like when I first started writing for Hard Talk, they're like, oh, you want to do these movies? And and I would start them, and I'm like, I am miserable reviewing <laughs> these, or and especially the books because I I'm like I have all these other books that I need to read, and I'm like slogging through this like shitty book somewhere, and it's I'm just like, I don't want to. Do- yeah, yeah, it's such a time sink. So I like. I, I push back and I'm like, can I just do comics? And they were cool enough to be like, yeah, just just go ahead, do what do do it. So dude, that's the, that's the dream. Yeah. So, but I can I can though like read and knock out a review in like you know half hour, forty five minutes or something. And whereas like yeah. you know that is half of a movie, that is like a few chapters in a novel. So I can you know ingest so many of them and get get so many of them out there in such a quick turnaround because of how quick. And then plus like look, worst case scenario. All right, that was a shitty comic. Well, here's another one that that, that hopefully yeah. is a lot better. Just like boom, 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 yeah. like right after one. Of them. No, that's 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 rad. I, I think that's one of the great things about comics. You know, and the other thing too, uh, because of the way they're serialized and they come out monthly, like for writers, you know, you don't have a lot of opportunities these days to write like serialized work anymore if you're not working in TV. Mm-hmm. So uh, comics are just I don't know. It's super. It's super fun. I'm really excited that this book's coming out. Like, I'm super excited the first issue's out. I'm super excited issue two's coming out. I'm really pumped to see what people think of uh, the entire series as they read it. Um, because uh, I don't know. It's 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 cool to see the continued interest. Uh, that's really new for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 rad. I don't know. Well, look, you're you're putting your your creative efforts out there into the world so yeah, i'm sure it's a little terrifying but it's also like when you start seeing people oh, engage yeah. and and dig the book then it's like oh okay cool you you get it like you you can uh, you know i had this idea in my head and now it's out there in the world and you understand what i was going for not just like i don't know it was dumb like <laughs> so because you're gonna get some of that anyway but uh um, oh, sure yeah. i'm actually a little excited about that oh, i'm excited yeah. about that well, yeah. when I first started writing about comics, like without within like an hour of anything I posted, someone somewhere on the internet would come in and call me a retard. And it was like, where did you? It was always different people. Like I don't know if it's just being targeted, but I'm like, what? What just happened here? Like I was just like, yeah, I really like this Captain America comic. And like, you're wrong. You're a retard. And I'm like, but it's, it's a fucking Captain America. Com- like who? What really? Like I'm retarded because I didn't like because I liked the book. Like wow. All That's right. How it goes, man. Yeah, I know. You got those opinions and those vultures, those opinion vultures will swoop in and they'll get you. Fandom, fandom can suck sometimes. It's a, it's a really <laughs> weird thing that we, we, uh, you know, we, we love to hate, um, ourselves with some of the, especially in the comic oh. book fandom. I don't, I don't get it, but that's out there. Now, um, you, you mentioned horror movies. I know I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on the negatives, but, uh, what oh. were some of the positive ones that you, what were some of the ones that have stand, stood out, whether recently or ones that kind of got you into the genre? Oh yeah. 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 Um, so as far as like, uh, I'll just run off like my favorite horror movie of all time, uh, is American werewolf in London. Um, I think that is, I think that's a perfect movie not to, like, and I think when I saw that movie, I probably saw that movie 10 years ago, uh, like right in my mid to late teens is when I first saw that movie. And I was fucking blown away. <laughs> it is so good. It's so funny. And you care about the characters and there's it, the story's so simple and it's so interesting and it's so well done. And it's just like, it's, uh, it, it just takes you 
so slowly and it, it it it's got a really neat magic trick and i and i love when a i love when movies have like a magic trick and you're not quite sure how it did it mm-hmm. because it it just takes you over the course of like an hour and a half to uh, following these two guys uh in like the in like the hills of of england and it suspends your disbelief so well that at the end of the movie, one of the main characters is like ravaging Piccadilly Circus as a werewolf, and it makes total sense. You're not questioning any of it, and it's just so good. And um, it's I don't know. I, I really do think that's a perfect film. The special effects are perfect. The acting's great. The characters are rad. Like it's it's fantastic. Um, so that's my number one. That's like my number one of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but recently, uh, what you know, I really liked Witch. I don't know if you saw. I haven't saw that, that yet. So it's 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 funny. I'm just like trying to get back into well, not movies in general. Like I have I have yeah. two kids, and like they just refuse. Like what happened was it's like when they were born, I was like really into you know podcasts and comics and video games and movies, and then they were born. It's like all that time that I had to do all of those things just got shrunk. So like video games and then <laughs> movies like just kind of dropped out of the bottom. So I'm like, all right, I got comics and I got podcasts because those are also things I can do. Like I could read comics on a tablet while the kid's watching like Mickey Mouse or something. And I can listen to podcasts while I'm doing the dishes or whatever. But like I can't do that for a movie. But I've just – I've started to carve out the time and recognizing, hey, I got like an hour and a half. I could bang through something. So I'm just starting to get back into it. Let me give you a really – this is my – this is Matt Ehrman's super strong list of four movies that I think – have that would you would really dig? I'm a, I think any I'm horror fan would really. Dig. I got pencil so in hand. Yeah, so Witch was really fucking good. Uh, super atmospheric, really, really, really smart. Mm-hmm. Like it's just a really smart film. Uh, and the horror it does, it doesn't do like your typical horror, but it does horror s- in like a really measured way, where it just kind of gives you like this dread. Mm-hmm. And also, the first five minutes of that movie are absolutely horrific. Um, so there, so which you got to watch, which you got to watch it follows. I watched, I I more- watched that last week. That was, How would you think? I loved it. I love You know, talking right? about that feeling of dread. That was yeah. something that like, it just like, I don't know. Like it had such a great opening sequence of like, immediately you're like, this is fucked up. Something crazy is going on here. What is this? And, um, yeah. that, that had such like that perfect feeling. So that was one of the ones I think I, I picked it up over Black Friday. It was like four bucks or something like that. I'm like, yes, I'll, I'll just buy this and I'll watch it sooner or later. And I had the time. I carved it out and that was what I, I went through. Uh, yeah. It, it follows. I was really obsessed with for, I, I really liked that movie when it came out. I saw it in theaters. It was super good. Um, I, this is a little older, maybe a few years old, but beneath the skin. Oh, uh, is that the one with, uh, Scarlett Johansson? Yes. And it is another film that is so fucking weird and good and horrifying. And it just, it really bugs you. It just kind of gets you and it makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's, I I easily think it's the best role she's done in a long time. And uh, no shame to Avengers, but beneath the skin. (laughs) You're tying back into Ghost World, like, you know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I think this is even better than Ghost World. So, uh, Beneath the Skin is really good, and there was another one I I was thinking of too that I that I really liked. Oh, it came out this year, Raw. Oh, um, I don't know that one at all. Uh, it's about this kid. It's about this girl. I think it's a French film. It's about this girl who goes to college, and she's like her whole family's uh, vegetarian, and um, she goes to college and she eats meat for the first time. And I think that's the only, that's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. And it's another really fucking smart, it's super pulpy and just gross, but it's really good. I also liked, um, uh, the, the one, the void, the void was really fun too. The void. Yeah. I don't know. See that one. I'm totally, that was totally off my radar. So, and I I feel weird because like, I feel like I'm going to say that and then someone's going to listen to the show and be like, oh, he's not a horror fan. What is he? No, like, no. I'm a horror comic guy. Like, I just no. said, like, like, you want to talk horror comics? I got all that. So, like, I'm trying to, like, ingest all the horror movies now to, like, catch up on yeah, all yeah. these things. 
don't don't let gatekeepers bug you out. No, just like just do your own thing. Well, and, and, and that's, that's at your own pace. That's me being jaded of 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 being called retarded on the internet for for posting stuff. So like I'm just waiting like <laughs> yeah, like someone's gonna. But it's it's funny because like I'll make references. Thank God, like I have an editor. So like what happens is yeah, like yeah. I'll sometimes make a reference to something, and I was like I've never seen this. Before. No one's ever done this, and like. He'll immediately write back and be like, actually, like, here's like four movies that have done exactly that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to revise <laughs> that statement. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, 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 I watched a lot more movies than I think of anything else. Um, I have been trying to read more. I, I just finished, I think, the second volume of uh, this manga called I Am a Hero. Which oh, is really yeah. Cool. The, Dark Horse is doing that. I've read the first one. Yeah. Yeah, really. I really like the first one. So I, ha- I have to, I think they're up to like four or five now that have been released yeah. in the States. But that was a really my cool, wife, like, zombie story, too. Yeah, my wife got me into it. Um, it starts out real kind of – it starts out real weird. Yeah. But then um, when the zombie stuff actually starts to happen, uh, some of the art in this book is just so fucking beautiful. Um, it really reminds me of uh, – I, I hate to harp on it, but it's like, it's, like a, it's like a more fun version of Junji Ito, mm-hmm. I think. But th- I might only be saying that because I'm lame and American and I don't read that much manga, so it's just yeah, like, hey, it's like I, I've, I've caught myself making, like, too many references to Ito after, like, I read yeah. it. I'm like, oh, like, obviously this is Ito. Like, this is through the lens of Ito. And I'm like, I'm like I did this too many times now. I have to, like, revise yeah. this because, like, not every there's, – there's other manga out there and I've read, like, there two. Is. So I have to, like, you know, tone that down a notch. Um. If you want to open up your repertoire of manga uh, 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 people that you can uh, name check, you can do Sahiro Maro, who's yeah. really cool. Yeah, he he inspired uh, Ito. Yeah, he I did like. Uh, I just had a um, a hard drive crash last last week, so I, I'm going through and like redownload. I lost like every comic that had ever been sent to me for review oh, purposes for like almost eight years so it was like all meticulously organized and everything oh, so damn. now i'm going through and like re-downloading so whatever i can grab but also like i had bought a um some of the humble the humble bundles so oh yeah, yeah one of them i got which i'm just i got, went through and re-downloaded today was the kodansha Kod- kodansha comics they did uh, attack on titan so there's like oh, a, yeah, there's yeah. a bunch in there and i'm like i like I totally forgot i had bought some of this stuff so now i'm like oh shit i can i can go through and read this i can read this like I'm going to add all these now and, and start reading through. It looks like there's some really cool stuff in here. Yeah, no, that, that does sound rad. I might have to do that. Um, well, that was, that was an older one. That was like one from like, like a year oh, okay. ago or something, but I, I had bought it like, you know, a year or two ago for had forgotten clearly like hadn't got it, had a chance to load some of these onto the tablet. But now I'm like, no, I'm going to make time to do this because after having more of an exposure to manga in general and horror manga specifically, like I'm, I'm, I'm more on the lookout for that kind of stuff now. Yeah, yeah, I am too. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, broaden my horizon of 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 like w- even if I see something on a comic book shelf that that even catches my eye by a little bit, I'll 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 like really consider buying it. Mm-hmm. Just cuz I I'm I'm trying to 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 just be a lot more open-minded and just like, you know, even if it even if that one thing catches my eye. It's like worth getting for me. So uh, th- th- that's how I've kind of discovered some cool stuff. So well, you can look at it as as more like fuel to the fire there because if it's like yeah. well, if you find that one thing, like if you buy a comic and you're like yeah, it was okay, but you got like one cool tidbit out of it or one cool th- yeah. like thing you could repurpose down the line for something else, then it, it becomes worth it. It's like, that's like something you could like write off on your taxes. I feel like, of, <laughs> like no, no, now it's a work expense. I'll have to check on that, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to look into that. <laughs> if I can write off buying comics on my taxes, I'll, I'm, I'm never leaving this industry. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's all research then, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how it works. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. They just redid the tax code. So for all I know, it could be that. Well, let's hope. <laughs> Um, now I wanted to ask about the so this might have been an economical decision, but why why look at the book at or why do the book in black and white and not color? Well, I so um, a few things. The book technically is not black and white. Um, the book the, the book is actually printed full color. So uh, the the book is like a monotone mm-hmm. it, and. When you get the, not to spoil anything for future issues, but the tone of the actual, like the actual printed tone of the comic changes. Oh. Um, 
So this this first issue has like a it, it's almost like a beige tint over the whole thing. And then there's that one spot of color, I think, on like page 15 or 16, somewhere in the middle there. Um, uh, and so uh, but we we decided to do that for a few reasons. First, um, economically, yes, we could not hire a colorist. Uh, it, we were doing everything pretty much out of pocket which was uh, everything was just free. Mm -hmm. We had to do everything ourselves. So, um, and also uh, when the book got picked up, we, um, we essentially had a year to make, uh, Lisa's working on issue seven right now. Oh, wow. and, That's great. Uh, you're that far ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've had to because we have such a long run. We have 12 issues we had to get a, like really far ahead to to make sure that we don't hit a uh, like a print wall yeah because we want we, we don't want any lapses in our releases because uh, then you know like people are not going to be interested in waiting mm -hmm. and then they'll go find another cool series to read um, but yeah so we we, we kind of found a really cool solution uh, it's not it's not grayscale it's monotone and the monotone changes depending on the issue or the the comic um and i think that's going to be really exciting for readers to see and, and experience um not to spoil anything I, I i don't think it's too crazy um of a thing but uh it's just another way that we've tried to help increase the the tone and the the dread and the feeling uh that things are a little bit different with this comic and i think that's important for us we just want to do things just different enough to where it stands out and readers will be like, Oh, that's why is this issue beige? And this issue is a different color. Mm -hmm. What, like what's going on here? So, um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the reason why. Well, you have, uh, you, I mean, I, I, I figured economical is one, one part of it. Yeah. And in fact, and one, especially once I learned that you're, you're married to your artist. So it's like, yeah, you guys could just do everything together. But the, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it also, it does work in that for all the reasons that we talked about before, whether it's, or it's, it's influences like Genji Ito or like, uh, or like Black Hole and things like that, where, yeah, you can see, um, these, uh, reference, but I like, oh, I'm sorry, it was a Black Hole, Black Sun, I, I, the Charles Burns book. No, it's, it's, it's Black Hole. It's Black, right. All right. For some reason I thought it was, but yeah, Don't so. Guess, no, you were like, right. No, I'm in there. there you're yeah. a smart guy. Um, you're a smart guy. <laughs> Uh, that'll be the, that'll be the uh, the the, the tagline or clip off the user. No, you're a smart guy. I'm just gonna have that as my uh, <laughs> ringtone now. Um, but that that there's a place. I mean, look, look, The Walking Dead is one of the biggest comics out there. Not only horror comics, but comics period. Yeah. And that's in that's in black and white or gray or gray scale or what have you. So there's a place for it, and I think it's like with horror, you can make it work very well. So yeah, I was just. Curious yeah, how that, how that, I, I uh, think came horror about. in particular, and I think some of these the some indie comics that I've read that are really like um, this one, Summer is, is black and white, and uh, I forget which one of the sisters is the artist. I think it's Jillian Tamaki is the artist, um, and it's it's beautiful. It's just like it's done in this blue and white, and it's 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 printed all in one color, and there's a lot of tones, and it it just it makes it it makes it feel um, it gives it a different feeling. I don't know. I mean. And this is no shitting on full color comics. I am currently reading Dark Knight Metals, and it is the raddest thing. Yeah. It's so colorful and so weird, and I love when comics fully take advantage of the color. And I think when you can do that, it really works, and it can really work for you well. Um, there was another Scott Snyder book that that I really like called Witches. Yes. That is, that is full color, and he does some like they 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 make it. They make it be about the color and there's so much color in this book that it's – if you were to flip through it, I don't think you would think Witches was a horror comic just because of how much color is yeah, in this book. Yeah, that is such uh, – can I, can I tell you a quick, a quick Scott Snyder story with Witches? Please. So um, a couple years ago, like Witches, Witches only ran six issues and I think they did – they yeah. did a, they finally revisited a little bit in, in Image Plus. So I hope that that means that they're going to be doing more soon. But mm -hmm. years ago, like not years ago, like two, like maybe two or three years ago, um, they were ready to go right into the second volume. It sounded so like the, Scott Snyder was out and, and uh, promoting that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do another arc. Like we have this. We already have it yeah. planned out. So I saw a. I was at a, co a convention and they did an image panel and it was uh, Scott Snyder, Jim Zub, and like two or three other um, 
creators on the panel. And Scott Snyder's going on and on about how he's like, yeah, we're going to, the next arc's going to be set in the desert and so and so's going to be doing this. And there's witches in the desert and they're, you know, they're <laughs> doing differently. And then Jim's up just like, it gets his chance turn and he's like, so your second arc is set in the <laughs> desert and there, are they sand witches? <laughs> and like, you see this look on Scott Snyder's face of like, fuck. Like I didn't think of this at all. Like I have to rethink the entire thing. <laughs> this entire thing. And maybe that's why we haven't seen that book yet. But I was like, like man, like what a missed. Like I don't know if it's a missed opportunity, but it was like just such a perfect thing of like. So there's sandwiches. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I feel so bad that for him right now. <laughs> oh, that sounds rad. I uh, speaking of Scott Snyder, I love his work. Not to no, not to go on. Have you read um, Severed? I have not. That's it. So that was a book he did before Witches, and before he really blew up. It, it was it's an image book. I think it ran for like six or seven issues. But that's like a really creepy book. It's set. It's set up. in like a kind of like turn of the century thing. It follows like a couple of kids that are kind of like running away, and there's this like creepy ass old guy who's kind of like stalking them. Okay. And it's just like it. It builds to this like crazy tension filled climax that you're just like I. I can't look away, but I have to keep watching. Like, I want to look away because I'm terrified of this, but... And I think what they did when they did the single issues, they had, like, the covers were... I don't know if they did, like, a... Um, what's that? Like, a die cut, like, where there's a hole in it? But, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can see the guy, like, claw, like breaking through the cover. So, like, you see his eye, like, like creepily staring through the cover of, like, you know, be- here's a beautiful image of, like, an old-timey look, and this guy has, like, ripped a hole through the front of the book. So that sounds bad. It's a, I gotta it's check that really, out. Really, really good. It's from it, they did an image, um, and it was it would have been like a you know a few years ago, but it was before witches. It was before like he really he became like the Batman guy. Um, this this Batman, I, I just want to say because I know people are like, I, I mean, I don't know how people feel about Scott. I obviously they must feel pretty good about yeah. him. But I think I really do think that dude is is easily one of the best working writers. Oh, in without, without a doubt. Yeah, and and he's yeah. he's also like one of the nicest guys in the industry too. Like I, I had I had a chance to interview him once before, and it was like totally genuine, really nice, really like really just good dude. Good. Yeah. I'm glad that makes me happy. Um, I I remember when I was like, I wasn't on the Snyder train until I read. Oh, it was the first. It was his first Batman book, not not Black Mirror, but the one he did for the oh. the I think the Court of Owls. Oh yeah, the first, from when uh, when they yeah. relaunched it with the New Fifty Two. Yeah, the New Fifty Two. Um, and there is a moment in that when uh you start to flip the book around. Yeah. And it goes upside down. Not to spoil anything for people who haven't read it. Um, that's just, that and I'm not spoiling it. That's just a storytelling uh maneuver, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never seen anybody do that in comics before, and I had only seen that done really successfully by a novelist a couple years ago uh, called from a book called House of Leaves, and um, I was really impressed. I was like, that's fucking rad. That's rad that he's doing that. That's rad that he's taking advantage of the fact that this is a book and you can flip it around mm-hmm. and stuff, and I, I don't know. I can tell you, though, that was really annoying to read digitally. So, because like <laughs> Comicsology like didn't get that memo of like, no, the book's supposed to turn around. So it was like, oh, hold on, I gotta like turn the tablet around, and then like the auto the <laughs> auto correct is like, oh, you turn the tablet, let me turn the image, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, so that was the one thing that didn't work out as well for. They might have fixed that. that. Yeah, they might have fixed that um later on. But I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, man, this isn't. This looks really awesome, but I can't quite uh wrap my head around this just yet. So feel free to remind me, or, or uh, did you get a chance? Because I I don't know if I sent it. Did you did did I send you issue two? I think you did send me issue two, but I have not had a chance to read it just yet. No worries, you're a very busy man. <laughs> I'm try I'm trying. What I, look, I'm I'm off. Beginning on uh, the 18th, I'm off for the rest of the year for my day job. So I'm like, I'm just gonna like read a shitload of comics that, that time, and also watch movies. I'm watching movies, and I'm actually gonna yes. play a video game. So it's like all these things. I'm like, I'm gonna, it's a total like staycation bullshit thing. But I'm like, no, no, no. I'm gonna catch up on so many, so much things, so many things that I just haven't had a chance to see. That's the way you gotta do it. Yeah. You just gotta, you gotta chill. You gotta have your little, you know, you, you gotta have your you time. Yeah, and that's I know. that's all. I can't wait. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. That's the only reason anyone ever does anything is to carve out a little U time. Yeah. 
But no, that's what I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. But when is when? Remind me when does the second issue come out? So the date that previews has given the world is December 27th. But there was a little bit of a kerf- not a kerfuffle. I think that's maybe a harsh word. But there was a little <laughs> bit of a of a strange thing where for our first issue they told. They posted the comic and said that it was being in it's I'm looking at it right now. It says in shops, November 29th to uh, mm-hmm. 2017. I think a lot of comic book shops got their issues and were told to release it on the 22nd of November. Um, so I'm kind of half expecting that to happen again mm-hmm. with December. So I'm saying you'll a hundred percent be able to buy our second issue in your comic book shop on December 27th and you might be able to buy it on December 20th. <laughs> so it just really depends on what diamond does. Yeah, and, and diamond is, the book. is unpredictable, unfortunately, like they, they do. And it's funny, like, cause I, I, when I spoke with, um, Mina Elwell, another scout comics, um, yeah. alum for Infernoct. And I think I was like ready to, I was ready to post this, the review of the second issue. And I'm like, all right, I got another week for this. And then, all of a sudden, I'm going through and like making my list of like, all right, these are the books that are coming out this week. I'm like, wait a minute, like that, that's not it. Uh, that's here now. Uh, so I had to like, you know, <laughs> adjust my schedule a little bit to make sure yeah. that that got posted because it was like, oh no, now it's here. But yeah, it's usually like, you know, they bump bump it up a week, they bump it back a week, or yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I'm sure that's tough when you're trying to plan, you know, promotional things and 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 obviously, you know, you want people to go out and buy the book. You don't want them to go in there, right? Um, well, let's you know, see. a week I, later yeah. or something. We've been, I mean, I think, uh, I think first and foremost, um, I mean, you'll be able to buy the book online through a variety of means, but I think if you really want to support Long Lost and the book and your local comic shop, I would just go in and create a pull list and just like pick pick a few books. Yeah. Pick a few books that you really think will look interesting or pick some series that you just want to start and dig into and just, uh, do that because, that helps support the the store. It's a really easy way to keep up with your book. They're just going to pull your issues for you when they come in and set them aside. And next time you pop in there, you just get your your comics. It's it's I don't know. We've been trying to to uh, to to ingrain that into people and just be like, just throw us on your pull list and you'll you'll get our issues. Yeah. Now, um, one of the things I realized I forgot to ask you about it because I haven't even had a chance to look at it myself. But um, you had put something, some like kind of like zero issue on Facebook. Is that right? Yeah. So um, I I am so proud of the work that my friends did with me. Um, so yeah, we released a kind of a, an issue zero in I think four parts, um, and there's there are four really short mini comics. Uh, one is by, uh, uh, they're all local Columbus, Ohio comics or, or comic artists that have lived in Columbus, Ohio and that I, that I, that I've known and have been friends with. Um, so the, uh, the first one was by, uh, John Pullman, who's a really incredible artist. The second one was by Renee Clewer, another incredible artist. Um, uh, the third one was by, Colleen Clark, who's working for Cartoon Network right now. And the fourth one was by Kaylee Davis, who actually just did some beautiful fan art for us that we posted on Facebook. It's like a GIF, and it's so, so cute. It's so great. I love it so much. She surprised it. uh, She surprised us with it. So, yeah, they're issue zeros. They take place before the first issue. They kind of give – kind of out of context snippets of the story that are cool to read, but I don't know if they're going to like, it's kind of, fla- it's kind of just flavor. Mm-hmm. It's extra. It's, well, it's a it, little bit of extra flavor. Yeah, and you get it. You get an idea of the, the, the tone you're going for with the book yeah. from it. It sounds so that that's a good place to, um, to tr- to check out the book. If you're, if you're interested, well, which look, if you're, if, you listen this far and you're not interested in this book i don't know i don't know what to tell you <laughs> um, but that's yeah that, that's the kind of stuff i i, I think you know it's it's also cool like it, you're kind of merging the idea of like a web comic almost with this of like yeah you're putting content out there for free to allow people to check it out and now it's like all right well if you want more of this go out and, and buy the comic yeah and um they did such a good job the, the thing that i'm really excited about is um if our you know if 
if all things go according to plan, we're hoping to have a trade of our first six issues out sometime next year. And we're hoping to collect those short comics in the trade too. Mm-hmm. So, um, because the, 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 the work that the, those artists did is really incredible. And I, I, I want to see them, they, they deserve to be in print, uh, because it, it's, it's just so good. And it's, it's, I was really proud of that stuff. So yeah, I, I, I would definitely check out the issue zeros on Facebook. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Pull, I just pulled those up, so I'm gonna have to read those tonight. Although it might not be good to do right before I go to bed. Now that I think about it, but um, <laughs> no, this that's yeah, that's awesome because you're you're able to kind of put that out there, and and um, and it sounds like you'll then you'll break up the bot the uh, the the, the uh, run into two separate trades, which uh, you know, good yeah. uh, good kind of part one, part two um, aspect that's, to that's, it. That's, that's, that that is our that is exactly our plan, and if everything works, that will be what happens, hopefully. So. <laughs> Well, look, Matthew, this is this has been a, an absolute blast. This was really, really fun. Um, what to to kind of wrap things up? Where are the best places to find you online? So yeah, uh, by the way, thank you. This has been a pleasure. I I have really enjoyed talking to you, and I I, I I'm a fan of the podcast. So thank this you. was really super rad. Um, if you want to find me online, you can follow me on Twitter, which is just at Matthew Ehrman. Um, and uh, if you want to follow the artist and co-creator of Long Lost, Lisa Sterl, it's Lisa underscore Sterl um, on Twitter as well. And she has – you can go to Lisa Sterl. She has a whole bunch more websites. She is fucking killing it right now with like her game and social media stuff. You can find her on Instagram and there's a website and she has a Tumblr and there's a Facebook. There's all that stuff. But if you want to follow the comic – it's Long Lost Comic at uh, Facebook. is is uh, Facebook.com backslash Long Lost Comic. We post frequent updates. We post teasers for the next issues. That's where you're going to get the updates on all of our upcoming covers. Um, we post fan art and all that good stuff. So uh, there's a lot of cool content, and we're really excited for everyone to read our first issue and follow us through this, what is going to be, and I, 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 I swear to you, one of the weirdest comic journeys you're ever going to have. <laughs> that's a, that's a, you know, I usually will also ask like, Oh, like, can you tease anything else? But like, how can you top that? That's, that's a perfect closer to be like, yeah, that's weird. The, one of the weirdest weird, com- yeah. We're going to get weird in this thing, man. Um, that's awesome. And we'll link that up in the show notes too, because yeah. And, and as mentioned, you could check out some of the, their issue zero up on the, uh, long lost Facebook page as well. But yes, this is, this has been a blast. And again, the so second, first issues out now, Second issue will be out, looks like, either December 20th or the 27th. But either way, pre-order it. That's going to be your best way to get that book. Make sure you uh, you do that there. Um, and then if you're not sure, call your comic shop. They'll they'll be able to tell yes. you if the book is coming out. There are other places you can find uh, lists of what's coming out. Diamond puts out a list every month, every week as well as what's coming out. Um, Bug them. Yes. So that's that, folks. Um, that is it then for this episode of Funny Book Splatter. I have been James Ferguson with my guest, Matthew Ehrman. You've been listening to Funny Book Splatter, a horror comics podcast brought to you by HorrorTalk.com. We've been bringing you the best in horror since 2002. In addition to comics, we cover movies, TV shows, books, and video games. We've got news, reviews, guest features, interviews, unboxing videos, and much more. Be sure to sign up to Steve's Deals newsletter to increase your horror collection without breaking the bank. Check us out at HorrorTalk.com and at HorrorTalk on Twitter.